In 1662 the French noblewoman Madame de Lafayette published anonymously what is thought to be France's first modern novel, La Princesse de Montpensier. Drawing on her knowledge of history and experience of Louis Zivs court, de Lafayette penned a short, complicated tale of love, adultery, jealousy and betrayal that ends in tears and tragedy, set a century before, at the time of the wars of religion. The book was an instant success. Even if the critics attacked the then unnamed author of mixing fact and fiction in dubious fashion and slandering historical figures along the way. La Princesse de Montpensier is credited with inspiring Stendhal more than a hundred years later and Eugène Fromentin two centuries on. It is also the stuff of modern day romantic potboilers and soap operas. Later this year, de Lafayette's work will become the first by a woman to be studied in France's literature baccalaureate, Bacal. The absence of female authors in the more than 20 years since the updated exam was introduced in 1995 has been blamed on an excess of testosterone in France's curriculum. The syllabus committee could have chosen any number of distinguished French women writers, Marguerite Duras, Simone de Beauvoir, George Sand, Louise Labbé and Colette to name a few. Instead it chose a woman whose name will be largely unknown outside of her homeland, except to students of French literature and fans of French cinema. The book was turned into a romping costume drama by French filmmaker Bertrand Tavernier in 2010. Madame de Lafayette was born Marie Madeleine Pioche de La Vergne in 1634 to a family of minor nobles who frequented the circle of Cardinal Richelieu, Louis Zinaï's prime minister. Introduced into society by her widowed mother, who was the daughter of Louis Zinaï's doctor, the young Marie Madeleine was not impressed at attempts to matchmake. Age 19, she wrote to her friend, the historian and writer Jill Minaj, I'm utterly convinced that love is something inconvenient and I'm overjoyed that my friends and I are exempt from it. Right double quotation mark. Two years later she married the Comte de Lafayette, by all accounts a self-effacing man who preferred his family's country homes to the royal court in Paris. Having produced two sons, the couple spent most of their subsequent time apart. This marital separation would become a leitmotif of de Lafayette's novels. A woman bored senseless with a dull husband conducts a secret affair with another. In a France culture radio documentary, Laurence Plazanet, a writer and expert in 17th century French literature at the Sorbonne, said de Lafayette's obsession with secrecy led to friends nicknaming her Brouillard, Fog. In all her books the secret is an absolutely fascinating theme, a treasure, a means of putting pressure on others, a form of authority. It's also the only private space that exists. There's this obsession with secrets, but at the same time all her characters are in a tragic quest for the truth, Plazanet said. One of de Lafayette's personal griefs, Plazanet said, was that she was not considered a classic beauty but was regarded as more intelligent than beautiful. Philippe Sellier, a literature professor at Paris Ivy University, added that Madame de Lafayette, along with the aristocratic writers Madame de Sabine and Mademoiselle de Scuderi, formed what he called a feminine avant-garde. They refused to be like most other women, he told France Culture. They wanted to excel in all of life's seductive arts, to be accomplished women with, in addition, what Mademoiselle de Scuderi described as a joyful spirit. Some of them refused outright the idea of sexuality, which they viewed as something trivial. For them, the most successful relation between men and women was of a tender friendship. Right double quotation mark. De Lafayette had a long and close friendship with the Duke of Rochefoucauld, the author of Maxims, whom she allegedly saw every day for 15 years, but the exact nature of the bond with him, unsurprisingly, remains perfectly enigmatic to us, said Sellier. They saw each other every day for 15 years, and we still don't know exactly what was the nature of their relationship. Right double quotation mark. While the older John Milton was writing Paradise Lost in John Bunyan The Pilgrim's Progress, de Lafayette was writing to friends denying having written the works for which she would become known and which would end up on a baccalaureate syllabus more than 350 years later. From September, final year literature students will study the book in Tavernier's film in conjunction. France's socialist education minister, Najat Vallaud Belkassim, was said to have personally intervened to have de Lafayette included in the study program after a 2016 petition set up by French professor François Cahun proposing a number of female writers. Lamenting the latent sexism in the current Bacal, Cahun wrote that the authors she proposed were not especially interesting just because they are women, 
but because they are worth studying for the importance they have brought to literature and society. Campaigners are now trying to increase the number of women writers included in the teacher training literature degree. Since 1981, only 11 books by women have been included out of about 220 works studied. If you like this video please leave a like and subscribe.